Hi, this is Maria Williams. Today I'm going to show you two cards that I made with the Crocus Flowers stamps and dies from Pretty Pink Posh, as well as with the Happy Birthday script die also from Pretty Pink Posh. Here's a quick look at the original card I made and the supplies for both cards. This is the Crocus Flowers stamp set from Pretty Pink Posh. And here I have the coordinating dies, which are a bit of a mess right now because I use them for the original card and I still have some of the post-it tape on them. Here is the Happy Birthday script die, also from Pretty Pink Posh. And here is the background stamp that I used to add a little bit of detail. It's from Concord and Ninth. And here's my chart of Prismacolor pencils. Um, this is what I used to color. I chose a couple of shades of yellow and a couple of shades of pink. And as a side note, I didn't used to be a big fan of charts because they're time consuming, but now I think they are a great resource. And as you can see, I have a chart for my Arteza watercolor brush markers right here. And I also have a chart for my Copic markers. I'm going to use my Mini Misty to stamp all my flowers and leaves at one time. And I already have them set up. I've also prepared a card base out of 110 pound Nina solar white cardstock and I also have a piece of crumb cake cardstock from Stampin' Up that I've cut to 3 8 of an inch smaller on each side. So it measures 5 and 1 8 by 3 and 7 8. The first thing I'm going to do is to stamp my flowers and leaves onto 80 pound Nina solar white cardstock. These pieces of cardstock are two quarters of an eight and a half by 11 sheet of uh, cardstock. So they're cut to five and a half by four and a quarter, which is also the standard uh, card size. And I'm going to use Memento Tuxedo Black Ink for my stamping. I'm going to stamp it twice onto the two pieces of cardstock, even though I'm only going to be using one sheet, but if anything goes wrong, I already have some extra flowers and leaves ready to go. And once I'm done with the stamping and before I do my die cutting, I'm going to go ahead and do my coloring. One thing to note is that Prismacolor pencils do not follow a uh, numbering um, system like Copic Color Zoo. So for my original card, I picked PC, well, Prismacolor PC 19, which is sunburst yellow, and 1002, which is yellowed orange. I used sunburst yellow for the majority of the flowers and then um, the yellowed orange for the shadows and for the smaller um, areas on the flowers. For this card, I'm going to be using two shades of pink and I picked out 928, which is um, blush pink and 929, which is pink. To blend out the coloring and make it look nice and smooth and to blend out the colors, um, I'm going to be using Gamsol. Gamsol is some kind of um, mineral spirits you can buy it at art stores. I actually bought mine, <clears throat> excuse me, at Hobby Lobby and I paid $7.99 for it, but well, I didn't because I used a coupon. Um, and Gamsol is something that you do have to be a little bit careful with. It is not, uh, it doesn't have any odor. It's odorless mineral spirits, but it is combustible. You're not supposed to breathe it, so you don't want to get too, too close to it and, and breathe it in. And all you need is a tiny, tiny amount. Uh, some people like to put it in a smaller container, like in a tiny bowl on their desk. Um, I've seen people use the bottles with um, a little bit of a dauber on the top so that if the bottle falls over, it doesn't spill. Um, but I just find that keeping it on my desk, I didn't take the seal off completely, keeping it on my desk and just being careful when I put my paper stumps in there is fine and I've never had a problem with it. So I've started doing my coloring and I am really not being careful at all other than to stay within the lines. But I'm not being careful that my coloring is really nice and smooth. I'm just kind of putting the color on the lighter color first, um, just kind of in circles or in lines or however. And then I'm adding the darker color in some areas where I think some shading would look good. Then I'm taking my paper stump and my bottle of Gamsol and I was trying to see if I could show you exactly how little of the tip I am putting into the Gamsol but um, I really couldn't. So uh, just um, know that I, when I put it into the bottle I just barely touch the tip to the top of the Gamsol and then I just go directly to my paper and it's amazing how it just blends everything out. 
This is something that was really popular years ago and it seems like we've kind of forgotten about it. And I know that some people used to use uh, baby oil instead of mineral spirits. I've never done that because I feel like the oil would just be a little bit too messy. So um, personally I would recommend the Gamsol. Here's a quick close up of what it looks like after I have blended everything with the Gamsol. So I'm just going to continue coloring the lighter shade in and then adding the darker shade and blending everything out. And I did decide on this card to also use a little bit of yellow in the centers of the flowers. So I'm taking the lighter shade which was 917 and coloring in the centers of the flowers. I'm going to blend those out with the Gamsol and then go back to the pink. Um, I have uh, I bought originally a um, pack of paper stamp stumps in all different sizes so I am using a different paper stump for each one of the colors. And one thing to take into consideration is that when you are blending the lighter and the darker pink the stump is going to pick up some of the color so when you blend out the darker color and you go to a lighter color you might get some of the darker shade transferring onto the light lighter shade. I think that in a project like this it really doesn't matter if you get a little bit of darker on the lighter color it's just going to add a little bit more detail. When I got my Prismacolor pencils I wanted a large set so I got a set of 96 that came with the sharpener and also with an eraser. And I believe I got my set from Amazon but you may also be able to get it from Hobby Lobby or somewhere like that with a coupon. For the leaves, I'm using two shades of green, 912 and 913, and I was mentioning earlier that uh, they don't follow, the numbers don't follow a system like the Copic markers do, and in this case you can see that 913 is actually a lighter color than 912. I'm doing the same thing basically that I did for the flowers. I'm putting down the lighter color first uh, just along all the um, stems and the leaves and then I'm coming in with a darker color and adding a little bit of that um, usually where um, I think the shadow would be which uh, if a leaf is bent a particular way the underside of that leaf is what's getting colored in the darker color but I don't think in a project like this that it really matters too much. Then once again I'm taking a, another paper stump that I'm using just for my greens and dipping it in the Gamsol and blending everything out. Another little bit of information about the paper stumps is that if you want the tip to be clean or if the tip is getting really messed up is that you can um, take a, um, a coarse nail file or a piece of sandpaper and you can sand around the tip of the stump to make it sharp again. Um, they do sell sharpeners for paper stumps but I don't have one and I don't really feel like I need one but you could definitely buy one. All the paper stumps that I bought were from Hobby Lobby as well and I believe Amazon carries those and the sharpeners. Okay so now that the coloring is all done I'm just going to take my dies and line them up and uh, run my piece of cardstock through my Big Shot. Um, because I was trying to be so thrifty with the cardstock my dies don't all fit on my sheet of uh, cardstock at one time so I did have to do two passes. Um, I uh, lined up a few of them and sent it through and then took those off and put the second batch through. Next I'm going to take my stamp from Concord and Ninth and this is actually one of their turnabout stamps. It's one of the original ones and it's called polka dot turnabout stamp and it is meant to uh, stamp four different colors. Um, you can see their videos on their website and there are other people who have done plenty of videos and now they have a whole variety of turnabout stamps. But for today's video I'm just going to use it as a background stamp so I'm taking some Versamark ink and I'm not going to mount the stamp at all. I'm just laying it. I've already taken one of the uh, acrylic uh, plastic sheets off. I am laying it on my desk uh, inking it up really well with Versamark ink and then I'm simply going to lay my card panel onto the stamp. I find this the easiest way to stamp large stamps onto a piece of cardstock. Next I'm going to lay out my die cut pieces onto my card panel and I thought that I had press and seal but I didn't so instead of that I'm just going to use some 
removable scotch tape. Uh, you could use uh, washi tape as well, but you wouldn't be able to see through it or post-it tape and it would be the same issue. So I'm just um, laying out my pieces like I did in my original card pretty much. I did eliminate the bud. I ended up not using it, um, but pretty much the layout is the same as on the first card. I'm only setting up the pieces that are going to go in the um, background. Uh, I have two large flowers that I'm going to set up with dimensionals on the front of the card that will cover the um, areas where there's no flower stem. So I'm just setting up the flowers and the leaves that are going to go behind those two flowers. Once everything is where I want it, I'm just going to take a piece of that tape, and again, this is removable scotch tape. I'm going to lay a piece of tape across all the flowers and pick them all up flip it over, add some liquid glue, um, in this case I'm using multimedia mat, and then I'm just going to lay them down onto my card front. I'm going to give this a few minutes to dry and move on to my sentiment. I'm going to be using white glitter cardstock. The one I'm using is from the Neutrals Glitter Paper Pack from Concord and Ninth. And I'm taking some Sizzix adhesive sheet and applying it to the back of my glitter cardstock. Then I'm taking my Happy Birthday script die and running it through my Big Shot. It didn't cut all the way through all the layers. Uh, some of the um, Sizzix adhesive shape backing is still there, but it'll be okay. Going back to the flowers, I'm removing the piece of removable tape and I'm just going to take a pair of scissors and trim off the bottoms of the die cuts that are sticking out. I'm going to leave the ones on the sides and then I'm going to take some Stampin' Up! dimensionals and add them to the backs of the flowers and attach the flowers to the front of the card so that they cover all that empty space and the, um, the missing stems on the flowers. I've peeled off the word birthday from the uh, piece of white cardstock and I'm just kind of eyeballing where I want that to go. And once I have that in place, I will peel off the happy and place that nicely centered above the word birthday. Sometimes I like to use my paper piercer or a pair of scissors to hold on to the die cut while I put it in place. It just gives me a better view of uh, where it's going on the card. Since these are really fine die cuts, I really wanted to make sure that they were glued down really, really well. And so I took my bone folder, flipped the card front over, and um, really burnished everything down. At this point, my card front is done. So I'm using some Tombow Mona Multi, and I'm using it for this because um, this isn't a delicate operation. Um, Tombow Mona Multi stays sticky even after it dries, so I don't like to use it for really detailed um, gluing but uh, just to glue the card uh, panel onto the front of the card was okay so I put lots of it and I like using the liquid glue because it gives sometimes because it gives me a little bit more um, time to move my panel around. To add a little bit more uh, glitter to the card front I used my Nuvo Aqua Shimmer Pen and added um, a whole lot of it <laughs> to the flowers. I didn't add any to the leaves but I did uh, go over the flowers um, two or three times. I really like the way these cards turned out. I think they're really feminine looking and I really like the stamp set because it has so many images and so many dies that you only have to stamp the images one time and if you use enough cardstock you can die cut them all at the same time and you don't have to do multiples. Whenever you do multiples of any one image it always ends up taking a little bit more time. So here's a look at today's card all finished. I hope you can see that beautiful shimmer. And here's a close-up of the original card I made. The front panel is just a little bit larger. <clears throat> and I wanted to let you know that the um, glitter paper that I use is from this Recollections pack. I think Recollections is a Michaels brand. Um, but this is a good bit thicker than the Concord and Ninth. And I'm not sure why they call it a paper pad, because it really is um, cardstock. It's pretty thick. Well, thanks for joining me in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I hope I inspired you to do a little bit of card making today and I hope you have a wonderful day. For links to the products I used and still shots, please visit my blog at mariascardsandmore.com.